A wonderful good morning. Nice that you are here, you are listening, you are watching. Thank you that you are here, thank you that you came. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this new day. We thank you that we are here, we are allowed to be here. You have brought us so far from 2021 to 2022. Now we are in February, we are thanking you, Lord, that what you started in this year, in this month, you also fulfill it according to your word, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm happy to be here today. Today I want to talk about God can where we can't. Um, there's... Uh, things in our life where we think this situation it has no way out the situation which we are in we push it we try to fix it and it is just finding always a way out to bust to cause problem to bring us fear and everything and in this moment it is where we will ask god to say lord help me here i can't do it by myself we have a certain story in the Bible uh, about uh, a leader in synagogue. We can read this one in Mark 5, verse 22 to 23. Says, that is the uh, New Living Translation. It says, Then a leader of local synagogue whose name was uh, Julius arrived. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet pleading fervently with him. My little daughter's dying, he said. Please come and lay your hands on him, on her. Heal her so she can live. This a leader in synagogue, he knows about the word of God. He knows what the word of God is and what the word of God can do. Maybe he heard of Jesus Christ. Uh, what he has done, all the miracles he has been doing everywhere. And it came to that point where he couldn't help his daughter, where he said, I need a miracle. I need someone to help me. He believed that if Jesus could go there and touch this daughter, uh, the daughter will be, uh, get, uh, she will not die, she will live. At the same time where everything is like going in slow motion, Jesus is ready to go with him and they are on their way. On that way, as they are on their way, comes a woman. It is uh, Mark 5, 27 to 28. You know the, the woman uh, with the issue of blood. She had heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. She believed that if we touch him, she shall be healed. You know, Jesus was going to this uh, leader of the synagogue's home, and on the way this lady touched him. So Jesus asked, who touched me? So it took some minutes, maybe one hour, trying to find out who it was. And I think this uh, leader of the synagogue, his, he was just watching. It's like, why, why can't he just come? My daughter, she's sick and she needs help. And he could be watching and he's just looking at the time. Time is going. According to the condition of that child, I think it was so severe that he needed immediate help. And then comes a woman, and he, she, she touches Jesus, and Jesus tries to find out, and Jesus tries to talk to her, and Jesus, it is costing him time. It could, <laughs> it could be also in your life where you think, oh my, I was almost there, but someone interrupted my way. Someone just came and stepped in. Something just dropped inside and it bring everything uh, uh, just upside down. And uh, I could just imagine, we have it here in German sometimes, you hear that there was someone who was really sick and the ambulance was on its way and someone blocked the way. 
Sometimes it ends that that person dies, or sometimes he gets the help but a little bit too late. And those who are related to this person, they will say, if someone just let the, the way open, maybe this person could leave. Maybe he will get the help on time. Maybe. And I can see this uh, leader of, in, of the synagogue just, I think he's just watching. He's like, yeah, it is done. The woman is here. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's go. While they are still Jesus trying to talk to the woman, then it comes, uh, one person came to uh, this uh, lead of the synagogue. We can read in Mark 5.35. While he was still speaking, that is Jesus, while Jesus was still speaking to this lady um, the, of the issue of the blood, a messenger arrived from the home of the, uh, the leader of the synagogue. They told him, your daughter is dead. There is no use troubling the teacher now. Yeah. He thought if Jesus would come in his house and touch that child, the child would live. And now, within this period where Jesus was on his way to his house, a, a, a woman touched him, and within these few minutes, maybe hours, it took too much time Jesus to be there on time. And because of that, the child died. The messenger came and said, I don't bother Jesus anymore. There's no need for that. The child is gone. It could be in your situation also. You feel like there's no need to bother Jesus anymore. Everything is through. It could be you you have a case in the in the court and the judge just made put his hammer where it belongs. It is closed. And you say, Yeah, why should I bother Jesus? Why should I pray for it? But Jesus is the uh, gen, uh, he's a game changer, so you can still pray and everything can change. As the messenger was talking to this uh, leader, Jesus heard it. It is not that um, he was just busy with the, uh, talking to this woman. No, he knew what this man was going through. He felt what this man was feeling. So he, this man got the, the information that he doesn't have to bother Jesus anymore. The child is gone. The fear of this man has come to pass. He ran before to go to find Jesus. Maybe he used all the, his reputation. He used everything to be there where Jesus is so that Jesus can listen to him and Jesus will come with him. And all the if effort he has put inside ended up like it is gone. But the game changer said to him in Mark 5.36, but Jesus overheard them and said to uh, the leader, do not be afraid, just have faith. Do not be afraid, just have faith. As we know, he, Jesus went with him to his house he told the people, don't cry, the child is not dead, he's just sleeping. They laughed about it. And uh, we know that this child was raised and she, she's, she, lay, she, became, she came back to life and he told them to give her food to eat. For him, for the leader of the synagogue, it was over as the child died all the effort he put inside. I don't know, it could be he, on, on his way there, he would tell people, out of my way, out of my way, just on his horse, just make way. And he reaches where, there where he expected help. And within that very period where it was just almost there where he wanted it to be, someone interrupted. This, this lady, she also needed help. 
She needed this help for 12 years. And it was the very, very point where she got this help. She came with the, also the same worries, the same hope, the same belief that if I touch him. And the leader of the synagogue also, he say, if he comes at my home, my child will be okay. He believed because he heard of it. Hallelujah. We need to believe that God, he can do what we can do. I was uh, listening to some testimonies and I asked myself, wow, there's one guy who was, uh, he had skin problem. Skin problem that um, he was dark skinned and uh, certain areas of his face were light skinned. Uh, fingers were light skinned, some parts. It, we have here uh, in German this uh, Melika um, uh, chocolate where you have black and white in one. So he was looking like that. So he said in his early age, he used to go to school and before he went to school, the mother would put makeup to cover every area in the, in the face so that he can just not be bothered because of the way he was looking like. So he went to school as a child. He, he forgot that he has makeup. He would just touch his face. Everything what he, he touched was just colored with the makeup. So the teacher said, no, you, you are too dirty. You could sit somewhere in the corridor. So he couldn't learn how to write or how to read. He grew up. They have been uh, just postponing, putting him, causing him to pass to one class to another. So at the end of the school, they just uh, confirmed that he attended, but they couldn't say he passed or he didn't pass. But they just wrote he attended school from class one to that. He couldn't go to college because he couldn't read or write. So his mother said, yeah, what are you going to do? So they got him somewhere to clean. He said, at least I can earn money to do what I want to do. He was very good in that, what he was doing, because he said, I have no other choice, like others who could write or who could read. So he used to go to church, and he, could, he couldn't read the Bible because he never learned how to read, but he could um, take whatever the preacher was preaching about in the Bible, and he began to sing that. He used to sing Bible verses, even if he didn't know how to read it. Then it came time where he was cleaning. They told him, what about, are you interested to be a um, storekeeper in this area? He said, yeah. And they told him what to do. He said, oh, how am I going to do that? They said, ah, we will take you. Uh, you have to learn like this and like this because you have to tell us when to order things. So you have to know how much we have there and what is there. So he was supposed to go to school. And he said, he went and talked to God and said, Father, you know my weakness? How am I going to do this? I don't know how to read. I don't know how to write. So he went and uh, he talked also to other people of the church. He's this. He say, you know my weakness, how am I going to do this? And it is an opportunity to do something better. They say, okay, we pray with you. They gave him anointing oil. He anointed his uh, forehead. He anointed his stomach because it is written in the Bible, from your, from your belly, it will be, <laughs> they will, it will be coming uh, or, uh, living water. So he went to sit these exams, to do what he was supposed to do. And uh, he was saying, God, you have to help me. I don't know how I'm going to do it. So he would, God would tell him which letter to write. If he was to write car, he say, C. Then he will say, C, okay. Then he will write C. He will say, A. Then he say, A, and he write A. And God will say R, 
and he write ah. Then he has the word ka. Because if we tell him the word ka, he will not be able to write it. At the end of the day, he managed to score the good uh, marks, so he got the certificate he needed. He worked in that place for a certain time, and they saw he was good in that. They say, oh, what about if you could do this? Whatever step he had to go, they ha he had to go to school somewhere to learn something what he's supposed to be doing. And he went to God always and said, Father, you know how far I can go. You know what I can do and how far I can, I can try, but I need your help. I can't do it on my own. One day he was very, he went very high and they sent him to college to do a certain something with statistics. So he went there and he had to do this test and he couldn't pass it. So he was in, in, in a canteen there just thinking about, oh, how am I going to tell the one who sent me here that I didn't pass? All the other tests, I was very good in it. How come I can't be good in this? So he just sit there, um, he couldn't understand it. And at the same time, the leader of um, that, uh, that institute was also in this canteen. So he wanted to pay. As he wanted to pay what he ordered, he found himself he didn't have money with him. So this man also, he was standing there because he wanted to pay for what he was eat, uh, going to eat. So the other one was saying, ah, I don't have money, so uh, right. But this man said, no, I can pay for you. So he paid. And they came and they sat, uh, sat together on one uh, table. And the, the leader of this institute asked him, ah, why are you here? He said, I was supposed to do this uh, test for statistic, but I failed it, and uh, I don't know how I'm going to tell my boss that I couldn't make it. He said, ah, I'm the leader of this institute. I have many people who can help you in this. They can do this. They... So God made the way for him to get the best. He believed in, in God while he went there because he knew God has, been, has brought him so far. And at the end of the day, he got his certificate he needed and he was promoted. That means he couldn't do it by himself. He couldn't. There came in God and he promoted him from cleaning to managing everything that was supposed to be managed. Not only in that land where he was living, but also out of the country. He was, he was the leader of other people. So God can do where we can't. If you feel like uh, these things are too much for me, remember, this God can do that with you if you allow him. Believe that the God whom you serve is is able to do whatever you need to do. He will not bring you to shame. He will work with you if you believe that he can. And uh, these people in the Bible whom we read about, they all have heard of Jesus Christ. And they believe that if, if he touch my daughter, the daughter will live. The woman with the issue of the blood, he, she say, if I touch his clothes, I will be healed. I don't know in which situation you are in, where you will believe that God will, if I, I tell God about it, he will help me out of it. Know that where we can't, God can. And uh, I pray that this one, uh, the stories we hear or we read in the Bible, because these are not stories as such, it is a true story that it happened and the people, those who were sick got healed, those who, uh, who needed deliverance, they got their deliverance. And God shows them also the way out. Listening to testimonies of others, it will help you also to, uh, to grow, also to believe God, to say, if he helped that person, he can still help me. 
If he bring this person out of this situation, he can bring me out of this situation. Let us bring everything we have, whether it is big or small, bring it to God. Go to him first. Don't go to somebody else. Don't go and ask whether these people. This man, the way he say, he say, he went to God and say, you know how far I went to school. How am I going to do it? For him, it was impossible, but for God, it was possible. Then he went to these people in the church and they pray with him. It would have been very funny to go first to these people. Maybe they could miscarriage him and say, ah, what are you going to do there? You don't know even how to write your name. But he went to God, who, is, who makes impossible possible. Go to God first, who make it possible where we, we find no way out. If we do anything without God, it will not work out like the way we wish. Even if it works out, it will not be uh, long-lasting. It will just fall off within, in the middle of it. And you say, oh, I thought it was, it, it was going to work out. Take, just believe that God can do where I can't. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for whatever you have helped us through and what you are going to help us through. Help us to believe that whatever you began in our lives, you also fulfill it. You know our weakness. You know our strength. Be strong in us where we are weak and help us to uh, navigate where we are good in. Help us to use this, the, the faith to walk more, to conquer more areas where you have put us and help us also to uh, lift others and show them that you can where we can't. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.